Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Omer, and I'm a doctor. My passion is to share valuable knowledge that can enhance and potentially save lives. My mission is to empower you with information that can make a real difference in the world. In today's video, we'll learn all you need to know about influenza, also known as the flu. We'll also provide valuable insights into recognizing potential complications and understanding when it's essential to seek medical attention. So, if you're ready, let's dive into the details. In the UK, there is typically a seasonal surge of influenza, commonly known as the flu, that occurs during the winter months. Nevertheless, it's essential to note that various viruses can also lead to flu-like symptoms, such as high fever, muscle and joint aches, coughing, and a range of other manifestations. Understanding Influenza Influenza, or the flu, is primarily brought about by the influenza virus, which falls into three distinct categories, A, B, and C. Among these, influenza A and B are the predominant culprits behind most flu cases. Different Types of Flu 1. Seasonal Flu Annually, a different strain of influenza virus triggers a flu outbreak, commonly referred to as seasonal flu. This phenomenon affects a significant portion of the population, with the leading culprits being the influenza A and B viruses. Typically, the majority of flu cases manifest over a duration of 6 to 8 weeks throughout the winter season. 2. Swine Flu Swine flu, caused by a specific strain of influenza A, known as H1N1V, tends to impact children and young adults more frequently than individuals over 60 years of age. Most individuals with swine flu experience mild flu-like symptoms, often accompanied by nausea and or diarrhea. 3. Bird flu Bird flu, also known as avian influenza, differs significantly and poses a greater threat. It spreads easily among birds, but very rarely jumps to humans. Human transmission usually necessitates close contact with infected birds, contact with their excrement, or handling and preparing infected birds for consumption. It is important to emphasize that properly cooked poultry does not transmit bird flu to humans. 4. Flu-like illness Numerous other viruses can produce symptoms resembling the flu. Determining the specific virus responsible for the illness can be challenging, which is why physicians often diagnose it as a flu-like illness. Flu Symptoms Here are the most common symptoms of flu. High temperature, fever. Sweating. Aches and discomfort in muscles and joints. A dry cough. Sore throat. Sneezing. Headache. Nausea breathing difficulties in infants and young children. It's worth noting that illnesses caused by the influenza virus tend to be more severe compared to those induced by other viruses that result in flu-like symptoms. Even if you are young and in good health, the flu can incapacitate you enough to require bed rest. It's important to be aware that some young children with the flu might experience febrile convulsions. A febrile convulsion is a seizure that can occur in certain children when they have a high fever. I have recently done a video on febrile seizures, so please check that out if you would like to learn more. How long do my symptoms last? The majority of individuals experience a complete recovery from the flu within a time frame of 2 to 7 days. Typically, the symptoms peak in severity during the initial 1 to 2 days and then gradually subside over the course of several days. It's not uncommon for an irritating cough and fatigue, or tiredness, to persist for a few weeks after the other symptoms have resolved. Transmission of the flu The flu spreads from one person to another through respiratory droplets generated when an infected individual sneezes or coughs. Additionally, you can contract the virus by coming into contact with surfaces contaminated by the influenza virus. This mode of transmission can lead to the rapid spread of the flu. Serious illnesses resembling the flu. There are various severe illnesses that initially exhibit symptoms similar to the flu, influenza, such as meningitis, malaria, or pneumonia. When dealing with a more serious illness, additional symptoms usually manifest alongside those mentioned earlier. Keep a vigilant eye out for flu-like symptoms that could indicate a different and more severe ailment, including 
rash, particularly if dark red spots develop that don't fade under pressure. Stiff neck, especially if you find it difficult to bend your neck forward. A progressively worsening headache. Not liking bright lights, necessitating shielding your eyes from the light. Drowsiness and or confusion. Repeated episodes of vomiting. Chest pains. Coughing up blood or phlegm stained with blood, sputum. If you experience flu-like symptoms and have recently traveled to a region where malaria is prevalent within the past year, it's crucial to inform a medical professional, as the initial symptoms of malaria can resemble those of the flu. Flu treatment. In the case of the flu, influenza, and flu-like illnesses, your immune system typically clears the viral infection. The primary goal of treatment is to alleviate symptoms until the infection subsides and to minimize the risk of complications. Here are various treatment options. General measures. Isolation, it's advisable to stay home as much as possible to prevent spreading the infection, particularly during the initial five days when you are most contagious. Hygiene, frequent hand washing with soap and warm water, and the use of tissues to catch sneezes and coughs, followed by prompt disposal of tissues in a bin, help reduce the risk of transmission. Pain and fever relief, over-the-counter pain relievers such as paracetamol and or ibuprofen can lower fever and alleviate aches and pains. Hydration, drinking ample fluids is essential to prevent dehydration. Avoid smoking, refrain from smoking, as it can exacerbate symptoms. Symptom relief, decongestant drops, throat lozenges, and saline nasal drops may provide relief for nasal and throat symptoms. Antiviral medicines. In some cases, antiviral medications like oseltamivir, Tamiflu, and Zanamivir, Relenza, may be used. These drugs do not eliminate the virus but hinder its ability to replicate. Antiviral medications do not provide a cure for the flu or long-term protection against it. However, they may reduce the risk of complications and can also shorten the duration and severity of symptoms by a day or two. Antiviral medication may be prescribed if you are at an elevated risk of developing complications due to the flu. This is especially true if you are in close contact with a person who has the flu. Typically, treatment lasts for five days. Doctors typically prescribe antiviral medications during periods of widespread flu, as determined by national surveillance schemes. They are also commonly used for individuals hospitalized with the flu. Antibiotic medicines. Antibiotics are effective against bacterial infections, not viral ones. Consequently, they are not routinely prescribed for viral illnesses like the flu or flu-like illnesses. However, if complications arise, such as a secondary bacterial chest infection or pneumonia, antibiotics may be necessary. Hospital admission. A small percentage of individuals with the flu may experience severe symptoms and require hospitalization. This is often due to the development of complications resulting from the flu. Please remember that antiviral medications are most effective when administered within 48 hours of contracting the flu or having close contact with an infected individual, with a shorter window for zanamivir in children, within 36 hours. Early intervention enhances their efficacy. Flu vaccination, flu jab. Some individuals, such as older adults and young children, are more susceptible to the dangers of contracting the flu. Immunization through the flu jab reduces the risk of acquiring the flu and also diminishes the likelihood of experiencing severe flu-related illness. The protection offered by the flu jab typically spans about six months, hence the need for annual vaccination campaigns. It is ideal for influenza vaccinations to be administered by the end of November, although it can be given until March 31st of the following year. This comprehensive vaccination effort aims to safeguard vulnerable populations and reduce the impact of flu in the community. Complications of the flu. In general, if you are typically in good health, the likelihood of developing complications from the flu is low, and you should expect a full recovery. However, it is crucial to seek medical attention if your symptoms change or worsen. Complications are more likely to arise if you fall into any of the at-risk groups, the most prevalent complication is the onset of a chest infection caused by bacteria, 
which can occur alongside the viral infection, a secondary infection. In some cases, this can progress to pneumonia, a more severe condition. Often, antibiotic treatment is effective in resolving this issue. Nevertheless, bacterial infections can occasionally pose life-threatening risks, especially for those who are frail or elderly. After having the flu, influenza, or a flu-like illness, it's common to experience a lingering cough for a few weeks, even after other symptoms have subsided. The presence of green phlegm, sputum, does not automatically signify a secondary chest infection. Symptoms to watch for that may indicate a secondary chest infection include a recurrence of a high temperature, fever, worsening of the cough, shortness of breath, rapid breathing, chest pain. Other potential complications encompass sinus and ear infections. However, more serious complications like encephalitis, which is brain inflammation, are rare but can occur. Conclusion Understanding the potential complications of the flu is crucial, especially for those in at-risk groups. Recognizing the signs and knowing when to seek medical help can make a significant difference in your recovery. And that's it guys, we have covered a lot of useful information today. I hope that this information will be a helpful resource for either you or someone you love. As a full-time doctor, my goal with this channel is to share my medical knowledge with all of you to help improve your overall health and well-being. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing for more helpful content just like this. I'll be publishing a new video every week, so if you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave a comment below. Until then, take care of yourselves and stay healthy.